So it's mid-season power rankings time. So let's get through this. If you've been following along with my power rankings all this season, you'll kind of know where we're at. But let me explain it quickly for you. For those of you who are jumping on board for the first time, I post these after every single race and I base them on results in championship position and recent form. And when I say recent form, I'm talking three, maybe four races, depending on how generous I'm feeling. At the end, I'll chuck a little clip show up of what the rankings were like after each round. Otherwise, you can just go back onto my community channel here or I do it on twitterx.com as well. You can go and find them, look at them for where they were last year. I've been doing this for the last few seasons. So they'll pop up on the screen here on whichever side I decide to put them on when I'm editing later. And you'll see where they are. Now, I'll count from 10 to 1. And on the right-hand side, you'll be able to see uh, an up or down arrow or, a, or something like that to denote where they are coming from compared to last week. This will be compared to where they were last round. So someone might be down two places from last round. Someone might be up one place. Someone might be coming into the top 10 for the first time of the season. Whatever, it'll say it there on the right-hand side of the name. And of course, we are including MotoGP, Moto2, and Moto3 in this because it's more fun that way. So let's start at number 10. We've got Joe Roberts in there. Now, Joe's hanging on. Joe's hanging on. Only because he obviously missed out due to injury, whichever race that was, maybe a couple. But leading into that, he was in great form. He'd been way up higher in the power rankings and he's dropped down now just because a non-start and then an average finish in uh, in Germany as well. So I've kept him in there in the interest of fairness. But he's having a good season, but he's down two spots from last round where I still sort of had him slowly dropping down. A re-entry into the top 10. And this guy's going in and out like a yo-yo because of his up and down form. It's Fermin Aldeguer. Struggling to gauge where he's at this season. I mean, he's lined up his ride for next season anyway. So it's not too big of a deal for him, but it is one of those ones where like you obviously want to go out as the champ, don't you? So it's an interesting one for him. He's in a good touch of form now, a second and a first in his last two after I think there's a couple of non-finishes before that. Moves himself up to fourth in the World Championship. He's probably still outside of striking distance for now, but with the sort of runs he can go on, he could eat up 40 points in no time. So the two boys at the front, Garcia and Ogura, who we are going to talk about later, will need to be on it uh, to keep him at bay. Down two places from round eight, Colin Vire, who I've been really impressed with, really impressed with um, all season. I think he should be probably closer in the standings, to be honest. 64 points back. A nil scorer in uh, Germany after, I think there were some issues there. I mean, I should have recorded this after Germany, shouldn't I? And I've waited till just before British round. I've waited three weeks, so I can't really remember heaps of what's happened. But he didn't score points for some reason. I think he was unlucky. Let me know in the comments. I don't know if there was an incident with him or something like that. But good solid run of form. He's picked up a win this season as well. A couple of second places. He's been on the podium again other than that. I think he should be doing better than what he is, but not all his fault. So I've been really impressed with him. He's sitting eighth in our top 10. Another Moto3 rider above him. L new entry, first time into the top 10 this season is this, this round, is Ivan Ortola. And he's sort of just sneakily, out of nowhere, moved himself into second in the World Championship with a nice little run of form. I've got it here. I mean, starting in Spain where he picked up a third and then he's had a second and a win since then and another third in Germany. So poor start for him. I want to say poor start. It wasn't actually that bad. Don't know why I didn't have him in the top 10 before this. He just was lingering a bit low in the championship standings for me but this little run he's gone on has brought him way up to second David Alonso obviously streaking away at the front we'll talk about him later too he is in the top 10 don't worry above him down two places this week interesting one because he's leading the world championship still in Moto2 at Sergio Garcia I do have him below Ayagura who's at number five I've dropped him two places to be above Ayagura to below and that just comes from form it's pure form I know Ayagura is still seven points back in the championship but Sergio, not as strong the last three races. He has had a one podium in those last three races. But Agura, a win and a third in the last two. So, And before that in Catalonia, a win. And then before that in France, a second. I know I take the last three, maybe four races. But that all comes into it. The, all the momentum is towards I for me in that little tussle that brought the points gap down to Sergio. So on a little run now, Agura, Sergio hanging in there. I think he'll turn it around. I think he's too good for this sort of... I think he's probably a bit too good to be losing the lead in the World Championship from the position he's in so soon. So I'm expecting him to be strong the next few races, but keep an eye out for Sergio, see if he can move back up in the power rankings here. Uh, so that's Sergio at six, Agura at five. Agura's no change from last race. So he's steady at five from the race before. He's been moving up, Agura's, uh, Sergio's been moving down. At number four, it's Mark Marquez. I have him up three places, three places in one Grand Prix weekend for him. Uh, and of course, with the opportunity of the Grand Prix 
uh, MotoGP riders to have two races in a weekend. It does give them an extra little opportunity to move up an extra spot if they have two good races in a weekend compared to the Moto2 and 3 guys who can only have one, right? But he had a good weekend in Germany, as you'd expect, Mark. Despite the fact he qualified poorly, didn't get out of Q1, did he? So, But it was undeniable in the races. I mean, solid performance on the Saturday in the sprint. Got himself up to like fourth or fifth. Again, should have filmed this earlier, shouldn't I? Oh, well. And let's have a look. Second on Sunday. So, had a really top weekend to recover. And with the momentum again, he'd had a poor week the week before. He was poor in uh, Assen, uh, not scoring really at all. Got six points over the course of the weekend. But his Grand Prix results have been all right leading up to then. And he's moved himself up into third of the World Championship. He's 56 points off Banyaya, who's looking unstoppable. But yeah, for me... It's always hard to do these top 10s because sometimes you have a look back and you go, why have I just rocketed him up the standings here? Sometimes it's just because other guys haven't done enough. And I always give a little bit more for the from, for the MotoGP guys because you're doing it at a higher level, aren't you? So a little bit of favoritism there with the MotoGP guys, although there's not that many of them in this top 10. As we go up to number three, down a place from the week before, Jorge Martin. A little bit of momentum going away from him now. Just a little bit. I mean, the crash in Germany. That's why he's dropped. That's why he's dropped. He had a, he obviously won on the Saturday, which I'll give a little bit of points for. But I mean, beaten by all up by Banyai the last sort of three or four races before that as well. So it's more other Banyai's results than his that's seen him drop and other people's results. So I have dropped him down one. And that's because I wanted to put up one young David Alonso with his two wins in the last three. He's got oh, three wins in the last four. Sorry. So I had to move him up to two. He's up a, a spot to two at the halfway mark of the season. Well, kind of almost halfway mark of the season, isn't it? Nine races, I suppose. Ten's halfway, isn't it? How many are we having? I just, it's just, how many races are there? How many races are there? Do we know yet? <laughs> It'll change again. Uh, so David Alonso is up to number two. Can't beat this kid. He cannot be beaten. He's too good. Uh, very, we'll go very close to topping the top 10 at the end of the season if Banyai I can't hold him off who is our number one he's still at number one from the week before yeah, there's not much else you can say about him he's just dominating he's dominating he's in that mood you know and you can't beat him anyway they did that Ducati race of champions thing the other week brained him in that too too easy put him on any bike he'll do the job at the moment too good and he's looking because sometimes you can have doubts over Pecco be like how could this guy end up a three time world champion be like I wouldn't consider him do I consider him like a Lorenzo or whatever maybe we bloody should. We bloody should. You know, he's up there with your stoners and stuff like that. He's, he's, and the form is shown at the moment. I know he can go off the boil quickly. It can go wrong for him in a hurry. But right now, absolutely incredible. Incredible. He's in some sort of weird zone where you'll just, you won't beat him when he's like this. I don't care who you are. Mark's not beating him like this. If, if, if this is what he's like next season, same bike, same team. I'm telling you, Mark's erraticness, if Pecco's just going to be this consistent and solid, you know, but again, Mark's Mark and he, so you never know. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. Talk about the top 10. That is your top 10 at halfway mark of the season. Nice short little video here for you. Now, if you don't mind, if you'll indulge me for a second, like I said, I'm going to put a little clip up at the end here, which shows you where everyone was at each stage of the season, each round after each round. But first, I've promised a friend something. This has to do with Formula One, actually. Well, it has to do with a bit of anything. But since Oscar Piastri's won a Grand Prix, an Australian has won a Grand Prix in any form, uh, I've promised a friend a little treat, so if you indulge me, we're going to head out the back and I'll show you what we're up to. Alright, so, Leighton, I owe you this one. Cheers, mate. Couldn't get an Aussie beer in England, except for Foster's, and I wasn't touching that. So, here we go. <sighs> out of an Aussie shoe as well, the volley. Cheers, lad. <laughs> 